Robert Carley nominated this year for Murdoch Mysteries again. Can you tell me how you first got started with such an incredibly successful Canadian show? Uh, sure. Well, it's it's as you know, it's been a good ride. We're now on season nine. Um, and so going way back, there was a series of movies made, uh, 2003, 2004, adaptations of the Maureen Jennings novels about Murdoch, uh, and Shaspery produced them, and they were, they were kind of dark, and um, there was, I think, three in total, and from that, they, they decided to, to try making it into a series, uh, changing the tone slightly, and, you know, when you get started on these things, you're just like, whatever, another show, sure, I'll try it out. You have no idea. It's kind of, it must be like, you know, when you write a hit song. I don't know, I've never written a hit song. But if you wrote a hit song as a, as a singer-songwriter, you don't really know what's going to happen in the future of that song. And, and those hits, you know, they might live on for decades. And not that Murdoch will, but it's lived on for one decade so far. And it's uh, always a surprise and a pleasure, you know. Um, I know when we talked last, we were talking about how this, the, you kind of came up with a almost a steampunk sound where you had orchestral stuff but using ring modulators yeah, and yeah, yeah. clanging metal and all that kind of Good stuff. So mind. how did did how did you kind of find the actual sonic voice of the show? A good question. I mean, that's always the challenge, right? Just trying to figure out what it's going to be. Um, it, we were lucky. I fell into it, really. I mean, I did this thing with the metals and the, I didn't even think steampunk. I didn't even think the term had been coined or I had not heard it uh, back in 2006 or seven when it all started. Um, and it sort of evolved, and we, we, you know, the sound was working. They didn't, at first, they didn't really want, didn't want it to be too traditional sounding in terms of the orche orchestration, not like, not a lot of strings. Let's have more edgy metallic kind of sounds, kind of grating kind of sounds. And so we pursued that, and in doing so, came up with this sort of metallic vibe, which has now been tempered more with, you know, a bit more of a traditional scoring approach. But it's a hybrid, really, and it's fun to work on it. Is there going to be a season 10 of Murdoch? Um, what's the date today? I don't know. I mean, I, I suspect so because the numbers have been good, and I don't see a reason why they would, um, you know, stop it. But uh, there's no official announcement yet so far from um, CBC. But something I, I hear something is coming up in the next few days when they make those announcements. Um, what uh, What are you working on now? You said you're working on something new uh, besides Murdoch. What's up? Uh, a new show uh, called Winona Earp. It's a uh, it's for Sci-Fi Network. It's pretty exciting. It's based on the life of uh, Winona Earp, who is the great great granddaughter of Wyatt Earp, gunslinger, and uh, she's tasked with um, killing all of the um, the kills that her grandfather made. The 77 kills have come back to haunt her and her family generations later, and it's a real fun ride. It's it's like a I don't want to say it's a western because it really isn't a western, but it does t you know take place out west um, in the mountains. It's shot in Calgary, outside in Calgary, and uh, produced by 24-7, 724, excuse me, uh, the guys who bring you uh, shows like Heartland. It's their newest vehicle, and it's really a ride. It's really fun. It's, it sounds amazing. What kind of sound are you looking at for that at this point? Again, this is an, an interesting one. I mean, I'm teamed up with Pete Chapman, uh, another great composer, and he and I have come up with a real, a real hybrid. His, Pete's Strength is really an EDM kind of stuff. He's got some great sounds and great sound design, great percussion and drums. And so you marry that with um, my sort of more, I guess, orchestral aesthetic, and uh, you get a real superhero sound, let me tell you. Yeah. It sounds like it'll be incredible. You've done so much eclectic work. I'm just going to read off a bit of a list. Uh, the Education of William Bowman, uh, Medical Drama Remedy, uh, Police Drama on CBC Cracked, uh, George A. Romero's Zombie Movie Survival of the Dead. How do you, I mean, it's, it's so widespread. Um, uh, how, how's the experience of working on all these different kinds of sounds for you? Well, it, it's fun, i got to say. I mean, when you get to change gears a lot, um, it keeps it interesting. I mean, if you always were doing, you know, if I was always writing piano trios, um, I might I get good at writing piano trios, I guess, but it wouldn't give you the variety, maybe. And when you're when you're, you know, faced with the challenge of finding a new sound for a show, for example, or a new film that's completely different than what you worked on before, um, it, it forces you to to stretch some new muscles. And I I think it's good, you know. I, like case in point, this new this new series where I'm working with a lot more beats and and stuff that's maybe out of my comfort zone, but it becomes fun and you learn a lot. And I think that's what keeps it exciting. If you, if you if you didn't have that, I don't know, would it be as fun? Maybe not. You know? Last question, how important is SOCAN in terms of uh, getting you a revenue stream of royalties on the back end? Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, you can't stress the importance enough. Um, as you know, our business is like up and down. You never know, it's feast or famine, really. And so those times when maybe you don't have a show coming up or you're, you're taking a summer off or to spend with your kids, um, 
it's because of SOCAN that we have the comfort to know that our lives and our income is not gonna, are not going to be jeopardized for those, those times when either it's dry or you just need to get away from it or you want to pursue other kinds of writing projects um, that may not be financially kind of uh, rewarding. So I can't stress enough the importance of SOCAN and the role that it plays in composers' lives. Thanks so much, Rob, and congratulations again on the nomination. Thank you. Thank you, Howard.